Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this tag sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. This is going to be a Mackenzie Childs inspired project. Not one of the particular pieces that she's done, but just that look. I'm going to use one of these metal flowers that I got at the Dollar Tree. This wooden cutout that says hello also came from the Dollar Tree. I will also need some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and ink. I'm also going to be using some yellow chalk paint. This happens to be by Folk Art. I'm going to use a little bit of this brown craft paper. And finally, I'm going to use this Harlequin wired ribbon and then some grain ribbon, a chenille stem, and some spray adhesive. The first thing I'm going to do is go in and sand this front part of my tag. I want to give it as flat of a finish as possible. Although this will become the back side of my project, it will not be the front any longer. But I do want to keep it nice because I like a finished back as well. Now I'm going to go in with white Waverly chalk paint and paint all of the edges white and this side of my sign as well. It will take me at least two coats for good coverage. And then I'm going to paint the word hello in the yellow chalk paint. And that also took two really good coats. I will paint those edges as well, but not the back. It isn't necessary. Now I'm taking my Jot Permanent Black Marker and I'm going to go around the outside edge of this entire piece and just color it in with the black marker. I used my ruler and I'm making one inch increment marks all the way across my tag. This piece was seven inches wide, so we will have seven stripes to this piece. I am going to come in with a little washi tape and use that to keep my lines nice and straight so that my paint doesn't bleed over in the wrong areas. I have used painter's tape before and it usually ends up pulling off some of the chalk paint and I have to do a lot of touch up to my projects. But using the washi tape was genius. This is the first time I have done that and I had absolutely no bleedage. This was the easiest time I've ever painted stripes. I can hardly believe how easy that was. Now I'm going to cut off a piece of that craft paper and I'm going to trace around my tag sign. And then I'm going to come in and cut that out. I'm going to use this spray adhesive and coat my sign really well. And then I'm going to lay down that craft paper and cover up my back. That just gives us a nice finished project. And now I'm going in with the coat of Mod Podge and I'm going to seal the front of the tag. You don't have to do this step. I just wanted a nice finish. And now I'm going to make a bow for our project. I'm going to use seven inch tails and three inch loops on each side. I will make three three inch loops on each side and then I will do a smaller extra loop for the middle. And we'll just even up those tails, place our chenille stem in right under that extra loop and then fluff out our bow. And finally, we're going to dovetail the ends as well. Now I'm going to cut off a piece of my grow grain ribbon and I'm going to lace it through the hole at the top of the tag. I'll just cut off a generous amount and tie a knot at the top. I'm going to use my wire cutters and I'm just going to open up the chain at the top of the flower here on both sides. 
I glued just a half of a tumbling block, just a small scrap of wood, right to the center of my flower so that I can easily attach it with some hot glue right to the middle towards the top of my sign. Now I'm going to take a little hot glue, put it on the back of my word, hello, and attach that as at an angle at the bottom of the sign. And now we'll just attach our bow to the top of our ribbon, turn it over on the back, and twist it into the shape of a loop so that we can hang our piece. And there's our finished piece. I really do love how this turned out. It's kind of simple, but it's bright and eye-catching, and I think it is a perfect summer piece. Today, we are excited to be co-hosting the monthly Sunday Fun Day Challenge hosted by Johnny and Diane over at Deco Easy. If you haven't heard of Johnny and Diane, we hope that you will go check them out. We will have a link to their channel in the description box below. Make sure you tell them we sent you over. We will put a link to the playlist in the description box as well. When you finish our video, Go over and check out all of the other amazing creators and their Sunday Fun Day projects. If you are new and coming over from the playlist, welcome! We are so happy to have you join us. We release four videos each week. We're sure you can find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Now, let's craft y'all! Hey y'all, it's Trish. I saw this piece on the Mackenzie Childs website and totally fell in love with it. I'm going to use this as inspiration for today's project. We're going to use this little basket that I found at Goodwill last weekend. It had the same lines and it kind of reminded me of it. It's not squared off like hers, but I think it's going to work. We'll also use some strips from a placemat from Dollar Tree. I had these left over from another project, a small dowel from the Dollar Tree, some chalk paint in white and ink, some Mod Podge, some super glue fix all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and a few tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the tags from this and that Goodwill tag came off easily but that other tag was old and it was very stubborn but with a little bit of elbow grease I persevered and was able to get it off. Then I just took my sandpaper and I gave this a light sanding all over. I was really just wanting to remove some of the glossiness of it and scratch it up some so that my paint would adhere better. Once I was satisfied with that, I grabbed my Waverly white chalk paint and I started painting my little basket. When I got around to that one side, I saw that there was holes in there. I'm not sure what those were for, but this little wooden dowel from the Dollar Tree fit in there perfectly. So I just marked two little pieces and I used those nail clippers from the Dollar Tree and cut it off and stuck it down in my hole. And then I took my chalk paint and completed painting my little basket. Now I did decide to leave those little feet on the bottom. I know the Mackenzie Child's piece did not have those little feet on there, but I think they're cute and I think this works, so I left it. Once my basket was dry, I started making my lines. Now, my basket is a little bit different from the Mackenzie Child's piece. That's why I said this was inspired and not a dupe. And it kind of angles out instead of going straight. That makes it a little bit harder to do the lines on it. So what I decided to do was I took a piece of that um, placemat that I had and I cut it down to a half an inch and I used it to make my lines. Now you can see when I line them up, I have to kind of fudge it at the top a little bit to make it work. I just made it straight across the bottom and that helped me get them on there. Now. It does not bother me that these are not perfect. If it bothers you, you may want to take your ruler and fix it so that they are all the same. 
Now I'm going to take my jot permanent marker and I go around and outline all of my lines and then I use my Waverly ink chalk paint and fill in every other one. Now you don't have to outline these lines if you, if you don't want to. I do it because I don't always have the steadiest hand when it comes to painting and by outlining those lines it actually helps me stay inside of them a little bit better. Now I did get this box from Goodwill and I realized that you may not be able to find one like this, but I did see some clear plastic, I guess they're bowls over in the party section at the Dollar Tree and they have these same lines. So if you can't find a little basket or you could even take a cardboard box and cut scallops out at the top and that would actually be more like the McKenzie Child's piece. But if you can't find a piece, check out your Dollar Tree over in the party section and grab one of those clear plastic bowls and I think it would work out perfectly as well. Now while that dries, I'm going to work on my handle. I decided to use one of these strips from the placemat that I used to make my tobacco basket last year. I will put a link to that up in the cards if you're interested in that. And I gave it a good coat of paint. On the gray side, I actually gave it two coats, but on the white side, I only did one. Now, I think I forgot to tell you, but the strip of this placemat is actually three quarters of an inch. So once my paint was dry, I marked off several quarter inch marks going up and drew my lines. And then I went back and did quarter inch going across and drew those lines. This gave me my grid. Now I'm just going to take my jot permanent marker and fill in every other block and that gives me my checkerboard. Once everything's dry, I put a good coat of Mod Podge all over the basket and the handle. I am using the gloss Mod Podge because I wanted this to have that shiny look like the porcelain part of the McKenzie Child's piece. Since I was using chalk paint, this was flat and that gave me my shiny look. Now we're just going to attach our handle to our basket. I used some of my super glue fix all adhesive and my hot glue. My fix all adhesive is gonna make sure this doesn't go anywhere. And there's our completed piece. Now mine isn't exactly like Mackenzie Child's. Um, that's why I said it was inspired instead of a dupe, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's super cute. I have it sitting in my sunroom and I'm sure I'll be putting some kind of flowers or something in it eventually. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. It is kind of a brown with a gold finish on top. I'm going to use some of this leftover burlap bandana. I got mine at Hobby Lobby. This piece of compressed cardboard that I got in a box, I rescued it, but you could always use a piece of leftover wood. Some black and white chalk paint. I also use some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is take my black chalk paint and I'm going to paint this entire piece. I'm going to paint the front, all of the edges, and eventually I do come back and paint the back as well. I'm not really worried about the words right now. I'm just going to paint right over that gold. This is a nice, really thick piece and I do like it a lot, I just don't like the colors. Now I'm taking that compressed cardboard and I'm just going to cut off a piece of my burlap fabric. I'm going to use Mod Podge and put a nice, very generous coat across the front because it is very thick fabric and very coarse. Then I'm just going to spread it over the top of that and put another coat on the top of the fabric and it will dry clear. It won't be a problem at all. I'll put that aside to dry, and you can see here I have painted the back of my wording, and then I'm going to turn it over, and I'm just using my little scraper tool from my Cricut set, and I'm going to remove all of that gold fulling. Although it looks white underneath, it leaves behind a little sticky residue 
so you can't use it that way. I'm coming in with some sandpaper and I'm just going to sand off all of the rough edges and the extra sticky residue and get it ready to paint. Now that the Mod Podge has dried on the front part, I'm going to go in with some more Mod Podge and start covering the back side as well. We'll just fold that over. And then once it's sticking well, I'm going to put some more Mod Podge on and then pull the fabric over to meet it. And now I'm putting another coat of Mod Podge on the outside. And then I start trimming up the ends and deciding how I want it to be covered. I decided I would put hot glue right down on that thick end and then pull the fabric across and then just come back and trim it up. It's going to be on the bottom anyway, but I do want it to look nice. And now I'm going to paint the word hello. I'm just using my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it a nice coat just painting the top of the letters. And it actually turned out very nicely. It looks nice and crisp and clean. Now I'll use a little hot glue and we'll just glue that right down to our board so that it always sets up nicely on my table. And that's pretty much it for this project. I think it turned out beautifully and here it is sitting on my display table. So we have hardly any money at all in this project. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this flower pot from Dollar Tree, this candlestick from the Dollar Tree, some trim that I got from taking apart one of the sun hats from the Dollar Tree, some chalk paint in plaster, and I also end up using truffle, some super glue adhesive from the Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I did was give my pot a good coat of paint. I am using the plaster um, chalk paint from Waverly on this and I did make sure that I gave it a good coat all the way around and on the bottom. Once I finished that, I also gave my candlestick a good coat of paint. It is about the same color as what I'm painting it, but I wanted to make it matte instead of shiny. Once my paint was dry, I realized that my trim just kind of too closely matched this. I wanted to have more definition in between my trim and my paint. So I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and I went back over my flower pot and gave it a good coat of paint. And this time I also painted the inside of it. I didn't want that blue to show. Then I also painted my candlestick and I set them both aside and let them dry. Once that was dry, y'all, I just could not leave this alone. <laughs> it still looked flat to me and I wanted it to have more definition. So I grabbed that plaster chalk paint and my chippy brush and I went over and gave it a heavy dry brushing all over it. And I love the effect this gave it. To me, it gave it so much more definition. I also did this to my candlestick. Now I'm going to take that trim that I got from this sun hat and I'm going to attach it to my pot. I used my glue gun and put down a bead of glue and then I just put my trim down on top of it and pat it. Once I got to the end, I thought that I was going to go up and start a new line, but I didn't like how that looked, so I just trimmed it off and then started a new line with a new piece. Now, I did overlap it. I liked how that looked, and I went around and just finished gluing this down. Several people have told me that they can't find these sun hats. I love taking them apart and using them as trim, but if your Dollar Tree does not have one, 
check out your local thrift store. I have found a ton of these at the thrift store and typically the quality of those is higher than the ones at the Dollar Tree. But either one works perfectly. I use these in all kinds of projects. Once I had finished with my trim at the bottom of my pot, I went and put a strip around the top of this. Now we are going to attach our candlestick to the bottom of our pot. I used a lot of my Fix All Adhesive. That's for the stronghold. And then I used a little bit of my hot glue around the rim. And this is just going to hold it in place until that Fix All Adhesive has time to cure. Okay, I told y'all I couldn't leave this alone. <laughs> Once I got to looking at this, I thought that top piece needed to be thicker than the bottom piece. So I went back and I put two more strips around the top of my pot. And then once I got that finished, I put two strips around the candlestick just to kind of tie this together. And then I took it outside and planted my new plant in it. And there's our completed piece. I'm actually happy with how this one turned out in the end. I know I kept messing with it and couldn't leave it alone, but I love the texture that the dry brushing gave to this. I think it actually kind of looks like concrete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye, y'all!